When it comes to sci-fi third-person shooters, Jet Force Gemini stands in a league of its own. There just isn't another game like it on the N64 that's even as close to as epic. And yes, that includes Shadows of the Empire. It's fun, but it's no Jet Force Gemini. I'd even go so far as to say it's the best sci-fi game made in the 20th century. But we aren't in the 20th century anymore, old man. And while Jet Force Gemini is good, its place on the pedestal of excellence is not so lonesome as you think. Metal Arms came out in the early years of the PS2 era and was such a blast to play. Both these games are really underrated on their respective consoles, despite being some of the best. This might seem like a bit of an unfair matchup, since Jet Force Gemini is an N64 game and Metal Arms was made for the PlayStation 2 and Xbox. But the gap between them isn't as long as you'd think. Jet Force Gemini was released in 1999 and Metal Arms came out in 2003, so that's only a four year difference. Also, Jet Force Gemini is so good, it blows any other competition for the N64 or PlayStation 1 out of the water, so we were forced to move up in consoles to find a worthy competitor. But don't think that we just picked Metal Arms because it's not a very good game. Metal Arms is also one of the best third person sci-fi shooter games out there, and is even better than some of today's games in the same class. This will be an extremely close match because even when we started to discuss these two games, Sam and I disagreed on which one should win. So let's get a brief overview of both games in case you aren't familiar, and then the battle begins. Jet Force Gemini is an epic third-person shooter set in space, on alien worlds, in massive warships, and even inside a huge monster. The gameplay is fantastic as you blast through bug-like enemy soldiers, as well as zombies, airships, and more. The game boasts several main characters to play as, each with their own special abilities. Combine that with a co-op mode, multiplayer, a sci-fi music track that feels like something straight out of a movie, boss fights, huge worlds to explore, and plenty of fun hidden gems to find, and you've got yourself one of the games that proved why old school Rareware was the best in the business. Metal Arms is also an epic third person shooter set on the world of Ironstar. You jump straight into the war between two robot races and help lead the good guy resistance to victory. It's action packed, fast paced, and has enough charm and wit to make you want to keep pushing on. Numerous weapons and gadgets, an awesome soundtrack, and a multiplayer mode that was a blast to play keep you entertained for hours on end. Round 1! The N64 was kind of hit or miss when it came to graphics. Sure, some of the games looked absolutely awful, but others were really good. In fact, for some games, I kind of prefer the cartoony graphic style. For instance, I think Banjo-Tooie, an N64 game, is a better looking game than Banjo-Kazooie Nuts and Bolts, which is for the Xbox 360. I just never really liked that art style, I guess. But I'm getting a little off topic. Jet Force Gemini is definitely one of the better looking N64 games. It's not perfect, but the graphics are still really well done, and I think they're good enough to be on a PS2's level. Uh, that's debatable, but even if they were, the graphics for Metal Arms are obviously better. If Jet Force Gemini has graphics good enough to be an early PS2 game, then Metal Arms could pass as an early PS3 game. There's really not a contest here. Fair enough. I think Jet Force Gemini's graphics are good, but I agree, they aren't nearly as good as Metal Arms, so I'll give you the point there. Round two. The story for Metal Arms is pretty long, but it never really seems to drag itself along. You're a mysterious robot found by the Droid Rebellion, and you're swiftly off to join their cause. The droids are defending themselves against the evil mill robots seeking to enslave them. They're led by the evil General Corrosive, who was originally created to protect the droids, but in a freak accident turned evil and destroyed his creator. The story's funny, fun, and exciting to play, just to watch it all unfold. Jet Force Gemini has a somewhat similar story, but on a grander scale. 
In this story, there's also an evil overlord. This one is called Mizar. Mizar wants to enslave the whole galaxy, and he sends his massive armies to invade planet after planet. You play as each of the three members of the Jet Force Gemini crew, as part of the Federation's response to push back against Mizar. The story also has twists and turns to it, as you and your allies are basically cut off from the Federation after your ship is attacked at the beginning of the game. You also get separated from the other members, so the first part of the game is all about reuniting with your teammates. You meet cool alien races as they tell you their stories, find lost cities and ruins throughout the galaxy, and also discover a big secret about Mizar, which is quite similar to the revelation about General Corrosive. Basically, I think Jet Force Gemini's story is better. It's like Metal Arm's story, but on a bigger scale. Yes, the scale of what's at stake is larger in size, but that doesn't make it better. I won't get into the characters too much in this category, I'll save that for later, but they do make it a big part of why Metal Arms beats Jet Force Gemini's story. Metal Arms has a very nice flow to it, with its own twists and turns. In fact, the main character Glitch is discovered by droid scavengers and is taken back to Droid Town, beginning the mystery of who exactly created Glitch. You're then shown a World War II propaganda-esque cutscene to help bring you into the background history of the world. Glitch is as new to this world as you are, and you're both swept up in the story. Each level flows together in metal arms, but Jet Force Gemini essentially just sticks a flag on Mizar and says, go here. Yes, there's a few times you have to deviate for different reasons, but they usually explain it through a brief text of dialogue or not at all. In Jet Force Gemini, a reason for going off course to a planet is explained by, oh, you need a rocket launcher? Okay, I'll meet you on that planet. Whereas in Metal Arms, the story is much more action-packed. You gotta get after the mill who's carrying the location of Droid Town. Quick, follow him into the mill factory. Now the floor crumbled away and you fall into the mines. You gotta find your way out. You've made your way out of the mines into the heart of the mill outpost. Blow it up and get back to base. But wait, the mill still has the plans and was just picked up by an armored transport. Quick, take your own transport and get after him. Metal Arms has more of a flow and more of an overall story than Jet Force Gemini. Woohoo! You're a braver bot than I am, man! Round 3! Jet Force Gemini definitely has better levels than Metal Arms because of what I was talking about earlier, the bigger scale to the game. Almost all of Metal Arms levels are confined to a single planet, except for when you visit the space station orbiting the planet. But Jet Force Gemini's levels are all over the galaxy, so you get such a wide variety of places to fight in, and it really feels like you're exploring the universe as you do so. The levels in Metal Arms might be on one planet, but they still have a lot of variety to them. Mill City, the Mines, the Gladiator Arena, and the mysterious Morbot City all have such a different feel and look to them that they might as well be separate planets. This game even has a part with robot zombies. Yeah, but Jet Force Gemini also has a zombie level, along with a cutscene that explains where they came from, and a brand new tri-rocket launcher to blast them apart. Basically, what I'm saying is, whatever variety Metal Arms has in levels, Jet Force Gemini already has a similar kind of level, plus a lot more that Metal Arms just has no answer to. You explore the dense jungles of Goldwood, the mines of Rith Essa, the rainy military based on Ikor, the starships of Mizar's fleet, and even inside a huge monster you find in the lava world. Combine that with the lost ruins, a creepy abandoned space station, the home planet of Mizar himself, and so many others, and the incredible variety of places just far surpasses anything Metal Arms has to offer. The music in Jet Force Gemini is one of the game's strongest features. It's absolutely incredible. Watch any list of the best music on the N64 and you're bound to see tons of music from Jet Force Gemini. It really fits the tone of the game, and I've always thought it's good enough to be the soundtrack to a movie. Oh, I agree. Jet Force Gemini has some great music, but I don't know if I'd say Metal Arms is a dud either. It has its own fair share of excellent music. The opening theme is probably the best example to give. It really puts you in the mood to blast apart the walls. Yes, yes it does. I won't deny the opening theme song is really good. And there's a couple others in this game that are really good too. But that's the thing. There's only a few other good songs on the list. But Jet Force Gemini is absolutely packed with great music. And while the Metal Arms track puts you in the mood to blow up robots, Jet Force Gemini's music makes you feel like you're in a part of a larger world. 
It sounds like the music you'd hear in Star Trek or Star Wars. It just puts you in the mood to go on an epic sci-fi adventure. Better music tracks and more of them should give Jet Force Gemini the point in music. Round 5! Okay, this one should be pretty simple. Metal Arms has one playable main character. Jet Force Gemini has three, unless you count Floyd and his little Floyd missions, in which case it would be four. And these characters aren't just like different skins for a single main character. Each one has their own special ability. Juno can run through lava, Vela has the ability to breathe underwater, and Lupus, yes, that's his name. I have no idea why they named him after cancer, but anyway, Lupus can use his jump pack to hover over cliffs and gaps. Well, that's not entirely true about the playable characters. Yes, you mostly play as Glitch, but there's several missions where you play as different colorful characters and vehicles. Characters like Slosh, Mozart, and Krunk are not only side characters in the story, but you can control them during different missions that have their own style of gameplay. You may get to play as three main characters in Jet Force Gemini, but each character's special ability is really the only difference in controls or gameplay. Plus, they don't really have their own personalities. The characters in Metal Arms range from all over the place, with most of them having humorous personalities and dialogues. Even the bad guys have their own charms like Mills screaming whenever you shoot at them. Or the heavy German accented Mill in charge of testing out the spy units. Come in for Jet Force Gemini also has a few interesting side characters, but Metal Arms has far more with even more developed personalities. Wow! Thanks, Switch! Yeah, no problem. Round six! Both of these games came out at a time that online gaming was just a voluptuous dream of the future. So when a game wanted to add something to its replay value, it had to come with a good multiplayer mode. And Metal Arms has the superior mode. There are several maps and ways to play multiplayer in this game. You can use tanks, control other bots, find different weapons and gadgets on the battlefield, and even recruit other bots to fight alongside you. The multiplayer on Metal Arms was fun, but so was the multiplayer on Jet Force Gemini. It had tons of maps to play on. But even better than that were the skins you could find. If you found totem poles throughout the game in single player mode, you could play as the drone soldiers, the giant bug brutes, and even the tribals. On top of that, while Metal Arms only had one kind of game mode to play in, the deathmatch style, Jet Force Gemini also had a multiplayer racing mode. But this last point is the biggest. Once you found Floyd, you could play cooperative mode on the campaign with the second player firing Floyd's blasters. So Jet Force Gemini goes one step further with a co-op mode, which gives it the edge in this category. Round 7! I won't lie, the controls for Jet Force Gemini are kind of awkward at first, especially if you've never played before. However, once you've been playing for a while, you do get used to them, I swear. But controls aside, why do I think the gameplay for Jet Force Gemini is the best? Well, for lots of reasons, and probably the biggest one is blowing apart bugs. It's just so dadgum fun. Use a machine gun to rip apart the regular soldier drones. As you go further in the game, they start carrying shields, so it's harder to get them with the machine gun. But that's okay, because you also get homing missiles. And my personal favorite, the Tri-Rocket Launcher. Even their biggest shields can't hold up and you quickly turn a hallway packed with armored baddies into a pudding plaster pathway. Speaking of the weapons, there's just enough variety to give you everything you could possibly need without having those useless guns that you never have to use. There's also quite a bit of variety in Jet Force Gemini. Aside from blasting bugs from planet to planet, you can race in the hover speeder championships, play a little mini game that powers up the tribal's defense satellite, and play missions as Floyd as you fly around and do Floyd stuff. One of the coolest parts about the game is about halfway through, when all three characters suddenly get upgraded armor and jetpacks. So from blasting bugs with triple rockets, to high speed racing and flying around on jetpacks, Jet Force offers plenty of fun and variety to keep you entertained for hours. You've got some variety, and Jet Force Gemini is fun to play, but so is Metal Arms, and it has far more variety in its gameplay. 
Not only does it have its fair share of cool and unique weapons like the bazooka, rivet gun, and scatter blaster, but there's also a handful of gadgets that Jet Force Gemini just doesn't have a comparison to, like EMP grenades that temporarily shut down all mills in the area, or control grenades that can even turn the largest mill titan permanently on your side, or even homing grenades. And while you may get used to Jet Force Gemini's controls after a while, there's still a few moments where you get hung up on them, whereas Metal Arms is pretty straightforward from the get-go in its controls. And a huge detractor from Jet Force Gemini's gameplay is that in order to beat the game, you have to find every single tribal. A stray bomb or a rocket can kill a helpless tribal standing in the middle of the battlefield, meaning you have to go back and start that section all over again. And in some cases, they're really hard to find. Like an Ikwa military base, there's a small hole in a dark corner of the room way up near the ceiling. Like, how am I supposed to find that? Give me a radar or a map or something. Metal Arms variety in gameplay is huge. You can play as other droids with their own unique styles of gameplay, like the schizophrenic slosh or the depressed moser. There's turret sections, vehicle sections, missions where you fight in an arena as a prisoner, and your only way out is to fake your own death. Covert missions where you need to sneak around, like the one where you're posing as a droid spy created as the Mills, and you have to convince them all that you're one of them. Jeff Force Gemini doesn't have anything like that. Well, that's not entirely true. In some areas of Jet Force Gemini, you can find a control pad that will disguise you as an enemy drone. You can sneak through and try to rescue all the tribals, and you can even decide if you want the real drones to live, or just pull out your machine gun and mow them all down. You may be able to disguise yourself as a drone, but it's for a very short amount of time, and you don't get to actually control a real one. In Metal Arms, you can get the Tether Gun, which actually lets you take over and control enemy troops. Not just the grunts, but even the titans and axe-wielding lieutenants. You can have so much fun just trying to take over different enemy troops and charge into their own men. Metal Arms has more variety in its gameplay, different weapons and gadgets that Jet Force just has nothing like, and finding tribals just plain sucks, man. <laughs> we try to be as objective as possible in every video we do, but I have a confession, we were a little biased in this video. We were biased for Jet Force Gemini. We love both these games, but I was really rooting for Jet Force Gemini to win, because I grew up playing this game and had so much fun with it. But if we're being honest, Metal Arms is a really, really good game too. One of the few that's capable of beating Jet Force. The graphics are better, it has loads of characters bursting with personality, and the gameplay just has so much more to offer. Jet Force Gemini stands as the king of the old era of sci-fi shooters, but Metal Arms is just one step ahead. One thing that Jet Force Gemini does do best is make you feel like you're really in a sci-fi universe, and a big part of that is the music. Maybe that's the reason we felt biased towards the game over the technically superior Metal Arms. Maybe if immersion into the game's universe was a category, Jet Force would've won. Who knows? But I'll tell you one thing we do know, both these games definitely deserve a sequel. They're both criminally underrated masterpieces that could easily be the start of a whole new franchise. Anyway, that's today's video. We hope you enjoyed it, and maybe inspired you to pick up one of these games if you've never played them before. Until next time, stay frosty. What? St stay frosty. It's, uh, it's a new phrase to say when we end a video. No, just don't, don't say anything. Just end the video.